Good morning and welcome to this service for Trinity Sunday. My name is Pastor Steve Mayo and I'm a Methodist minister in the South End and Lee Circuit in Essex. Trinity Sunday. We mention the Trinity all the time in our liturgies and our services, and yet sometimes we can find it quite a confusing or a perplexing uh, thing to think about, really. So in this service and in my reflection a bit later on, we will be looking at the persons of the Trinity to try and give, give us a better understanding of how the Trinity comes together and how the Trinity benefits each one of us as God's children. But we're going to start today's service with a, a Trinitarian statement. And uh, we're going to read this at the beginning of the service. And we're also going to read it at the end of the service and see if what we read uh, means more to us. And we can say it more confidently, hopefully, at the end of the service than maybe we can at the beginning. There is a response in this uh, statement and it will appear in yellow. So please feel free to join me if you wish to. A Trinitarian Statement of Faith We believe in God. In love you created the earth, made us your children, and we call you Father. We believe in God. Jesus, you show us your love, forgiving, healing, restoring, transforming. We believe in God. Through you, Holy Spirit, we share in the life that you live and show your love in the world. Amen. Our first scripture reading this morning is going to come from Psalm 8, and this is going to be read to us by Sanya Strom. Sanya is a local preacher in the South End and Essex um, circuit, and uh, she's going to do both our readings today, and she's going to start with the first one from Psalm 8. Thank you. Psalm 8. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. From the lips of children and infants, you have ordained praise because of your enemies, to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him? The son of man that you care for him. You made him a little lower than the heavenly beginnings and crowned him with glory and honour. You made him ruler over the works of your hands. You put everything under his feet, all flocks and herds and the beasts of the field, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea, all that swim the paths of the sea. O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Sanya. Our opening hymn this morning is Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God Almighty to the tune of Nicaea. And the words are written by Reginald Heber and is based on Revelations chapter 4 verses 8 to 11. Enjoy.
Thank you for that good sing. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we are grateful that we can come before you on this Trinity Sunday to think about you and your characteristics and all that you mean and do for each one of us. Father God, we bring before you each one of our church members, whether we are members of this church or others, that Lord, you would just be with us at this time. Although we are still more or less in isolation and uh, the lockdown is starting to uh, dissipate, I pray, Lord, that you just keep us safe. Um, keep us understanding that we do need to keep our social distancing. Help us, I pray, and give us the strength. So, Father God, as we meet in this way this morning, I pray that your word would touch each one of our hearts, but also that in our minds we would understand more about you and your love for each one of us. So be with us now, I pray, as we continue to worship you. And I ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now let us say the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And now we have our second reading brought from Matthew's Gospel, and again this will be read by Sanya. Matthew 28, verses 16 to 20. The Great Commission. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but they doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. On Trinity Sunday, we remember that God revealed himself to us in three separate ways, as three separate persons, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. But in no way does the doctrine of the Trinity attempt to completely explain who God is. It only explains to us in a very simple way what God has revealed to us about himself so far. To describe the tip of an iceberg above the water is not to describe the entire iceberg, because as we know, two thirds of the iceberg is below the surface of the water. And so we as Christians uphold the Trinity, not as a complete explanation of God, but simply as a way of describing the tip of the iceberg, what we know about him. So where's the biblical evidence for the Trinity then? Well, the first indication that God exists as more than one person appears right at the beginning of the Bible in Genesis chapter 1, <clears throat> where God says, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness. And also in Isaiah chapter 6, verse 8, then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? And also in the New Testament, when Jesus was baptised, the three persons of the Trinity are mentioned in the same place at the same time. Matthew 3 verses 16 to 17 says, As soon as Jesus was baptised, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was opened and he saw the Spirit of God 
descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, this is my son, whom I love, with him I am well pleased. Here then, at one moment, we have the three members of the Trinity performing three distinct acts. God the Father is speaking from heaven, the Son is being baptised, and God the Holy Spirit comes down from heaven to rest upon and empower Jesus for his ministry. Then right at the end of Jesus' ministry, he instructs his disciples and says, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. As we heard in our reading read to us by Sanya from Matthew 28. So there we have some biblical evidence. Sometimes to help us describe the Trinity, we give each member, each person a specific role. We say that God the Father is the creator, the governor, the preserver of all things. The Son is the Redeemer and the Holy Spirit is the Sanctifier, the one who leads us into holiness and helps us stay there, thus supporting that statement of faith we read earlier. Although we assign different roles to each member of the Trinity, they are still one, co-equal in power and glory. When our own John Wesley revised the Book of Common Prayer in 1784, the first statement in the old edition remained the first statement in the new edition. And it says, there is but one living and true God, everlasting, without body or parts, of infinite power, wisdom and goodness, the maker and preserver of all things, both visible and invisible. And in unity of this Godhead, there are three persons, one of substance, power, and eternity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Now, many people outside and even inside the church get very confused when we start talking about a triune God, the three in one. But that is what we believe as Methodists. We are monotheistic. We believe in one God, one God, but three persons. Now, this can seem pretty perplexing, and over time, people have used different ways of explaining this. One of them is water, ice, and steam. They are all water, but they are just, just different forms of water. Father, Son, and Spirit. They are all God, but just different forms with different characteristics. So let's look at these three persons of the Trinity. And we start with the Father. God the Father, as creator, brings the people of this world together. He makes us brothers and sisters, no matter what part of the world we may live. He is our Father, and that makes us his children. Our Father. One family. This is why we must pray for unity and peace amongst the different nations of this world, and also in our own lives. We all have our ups and downs with others, don't we, our run-ins? But I don't believe anyone really enjoys it. We much prefer to live at peace with each other. And that is the same nature of God the Father. Whether that peace is in the house we live in or in the house we worship in, he wants us to live in peace and at peace. Matthew 5 verse 9 said, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. And Romans 12, 18, if it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. God the Father is also the preserver. We don't worship a God who is distant from us. Just the same way as a shepherd tends his sheep, our heavenly Father tends and looks after us. He is always close to us. How great it is for us to have a God who walks right beside us, holding our hands in times of joy as well as times of pain. In the words of the hymn writer Theodore Kitchen, he writes, How wonderful it is to walk with God along the road that holy men have trod. How wonderful it is to hear him say, Fear not, have faith, tis I who lead the way. 
this is not a, a hymn written by a man out of his imagination, but out of inspiration. A man inspired by what he has read in God's word, but also has experienced of God's love firsthand. By reading portions of scripture like Deuteronomy 31, be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified or afraid for the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. And Hebrews 13, God has said, never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. So we say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. Now let's look at the son. God, the son as redeemer, brings into our lives a never ending hope for the future. If we recognize Jesus as our Lord and Savior, then we have nothing to fear of what the future holds. All we have to look forward to is an eternity in heaven with him. And what can be better than that? Philippians 3 verse 20 tells us our citizenship is in heaven. And 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 13. But in keeping with his promise, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth. Jesus is God the Father's confirmation of his love for each one of us and for his world. He gave his one and only son that we might live and not perish. John 3.16, probably the most well-known verse of scripture. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. That's some hope. In a world full of wickedness and evil, God still saw hope for mankind, hope for us. And if God the Father, who sees all the evil in the world at the same time, was still willing to send his son into the world to save it, how can we give up on it and say it's beyond hope? Hope is what Jesus gives to us because of his death on the cross. Hope for the future, hope for this world and hope for ourselves. Jesus, God the Son, is our Redeemer. Then there's the Holy Spirit. God the Spirit, as the Sanctifier, is here to help us find and retain holiness, to bring us into a oneness with God the Father and to unite us with God the Son. The Holy Spirit is the one who challenges us, convicts us, counsels us and empowers us and directs us. In words of another great hymn writer, John Gowans, he writes, Who is it tells me what to do and helps me to obey? Who is it plans the route for me and will not let me stray? Who is it tells me when to speak and what I ought to say? That's the spirit. Who is it gives me heavy loads and helps me take the strain? Who is it calls to sacrifice and helps me bear the pain? Who is it sees me when I fall and lifts me up again? That's the spirit. Who is it shows me what to be and leads me to that goal? Who is it claims the heart of me and wants to take control? Who is it calls to holiness of body, mind and soul? That's the spirit, the Holy Spirit. So finally, this morning, let's recap on the Trinity. We have God the Father who loves us, is near to us and looks after us. We have God the Son who never gives up on us and gives us an unending hope for the future through his sacrifice on the cross. And we have God the Holy Spirit who guides us and leads us into holiness. What more can we ask for? And all we have to do to receive all these wonderful riches of this Trinity is respond by accepting Jesus into our hearts and thus allowing the Holy Spirit free access to our hearts and to our lives. May each one of us accept this triune gift. Amen. Before we come into our time of intercessory prayer, we're going to sing our second hymn together. And this is entitled the Splendour of the King, and it's written by Chris Tomlin, Ed Cash and Jesse Reeves. Let's sing together, The Splendour of the King.
the splendor of the King, clothed in majesty. Let all the earth rejoice. Let all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide. And trembles at his voice. And trembles at his voice. How great! Sing with me how great is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God. Age to age, He stands, and time.
We now come to our prayers of intercession. There is a response if you'd like to make it and it will come up in your screen in yellow and it will say, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray. On this Trinity Sunday, we have come before you, Lord, to offer our praise and adoration. You are God, the creator, given us richly all things to enjoy. You are Christ, the saviour of the world, made flesh to set us free. You are the spirit of truth and love, willing to dwell in us. You are holy and blessed. One God, eternal Trinity, be near to us, your people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for your church throughout the world, for those that are thriving and those which have lost a sense of direction. We give thanks for our church and its people and gladly acknowledge all the gifts that you have given us through its life. We ask you to open wide our hearts that we may welcome the stranger and share our faith with others. Open wide our minds that we may receive new truth and understand your will. Open wide our lives that through discipline and prayer we may experience your power in daily living. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of the universe, we praise you for your creation. You have provided mankind with everything it needs for life and health. Grant that the resources of the earth may neither be hoarded by the selfish nor squandered by the foolish, but that all may share your gifts. We remember all who bear the responsibility of leadership for heads of state, ambassadors and political advisers. We think today particularly of the parts of the world where there is violence and unrest. Give them a vision of peace and reconciliation, for you, Lord, can find a way where men and women are lost. We remember those who struggle against injustice, for men and women who have established love supremacy in violent and oppressive societies, and for those whom war and famine have robbed of homes, family and friends. May they be filled with your strength and wisdom and grant that where the love of man has failed, your divine compassion may heal. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember this morning those who are sick, sad or lonely, and those who are brave and patient when things are going wrong. We pray that they may be aware of your comforting presence and know that in your hands they are safe and loved. Lord, we pray for all whose life is saddened by the death of a loved one. Be with them in their loneliness and let them know that Jesus Christ is the light of the world, a light which no darkness can quench. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we ask you to lead us into this coming week. Help us to believe that you are close by us. Help us from making mistakes and help us never to disappoint you. When we face hard decisions or difficult work, when, our, when we enjoy ourselves and have fun with others, may we know that you share in these times with us. And we ask these prayers in the name of Jesus, our Saviour and friend. Amen. We now come to our, our final hymn for this service, written by Francis Pott. Uh, angel voices ever singing.
come to the end of this service. Thank you very much for joining me. And again, I hope you found this service helpful and maybe understand a little more about the Trinity and uh, what the Trinity can mean to us and give to each one of us. And a special thank you to Sanya for doing the scripture readings for this morning. And as I said at the beginning of this service, we will end this service as we recite this Trinitarian statement of faith. A Trinitarian statement of faith. We believe in God. In love, you created the earth, made us your children, and we call you Father. We believe in God. Jesus, you show us your love, forgiving, healing, restoring, transforming. We believe in God. Through you, Holy Spirit, we share in the life that you live and show your love in the world. Amen. May you walk into this week with God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. May God bless you. Amen. 